Good morning. morning. Welcome to one and all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we gather for worship today. Happy Father's Day to all fathers who are with us and maybe are watching online this morning as well. Uh, Happy Father's Day to all fathers. We thank God for you, uh, for the blessings that uh, the Lord works through fathers. And so we pray God's blessings upon all fathers today too as they live out their vocation in the Lord, uh, serving the Lord and serving um, God's children as well as, uh, as they are fathers. So happy Father's Day to all. As we gather today, uh, God's word uh, brings us blessings as we hear about who he is, in a sense, hearing about our Heavenly Father today and all the blessings that he gives to us. Also, God's blessings come to us through the Lord's Supper today and receiving the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And so as we gather today, uh, God's blessings come to us anew. And may that be a blessing to us as we gather for worship this morning. Our order of worship will be uh, followed out of our hymnal this morning. Once again, we will use setting three that begins on page 184. So with that, let us join our voices together this morning as we sing our opening hymn, which is number 659, Lord of Our Life. May the Lord bless us this morning. this day we do gather in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with the true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We spend a moment in silence to reflect on God's word. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, 
confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, Receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, Heart most high in the glory of God, Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your mercy, guide the course of this world so that your church may joyfully serve you in godly peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for this morning's readings. Testament reading is from Job chapter 38, verses 1 through 11. When the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man, and I will question you, and you make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determines its measurements? Surely you know or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the seas with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far you shall come and no farther and here shall your proud waves be stayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. 
working together with him, then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time, I listened to you, and in a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we will live as punished and not yet killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, to you Corinthians, our heart is open wide. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own afflictions. In return, I speak as to children, widen your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing that Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Our service this morning continues as we speak the words of our Christian faith, found in the wording of the Nicene Creed. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The congregation may be seated. At this time, the children are invited forward for the children's message.
Good morning, everyone. How is everyone today? Good. Good to see you in church. Thanks for coming up. Today we are celebrating Father's Day, right? Right? Okay, good. Celebrating Father's Day today. So today we're thinking about the gift that we have in our fathers. So that's kind of the point of our message today. But first of all, I'd like us to think about the Lord's Prayer. As we think about Father's Day, let's think about the Lord's Prayer. Who can tell me, how does the Lord's Prayer start? What are the first two words? What do you know? Then, Our Father. Very good. So the Lord's Prayer starts out with the words, Our Father. So notice there, we are praying to our Father, our Heavenly Father, and we're praying to Him for the things that we need. So let me ask you, why do we pray to our Father in Heaven? Why would we pray to our Heavenly Father? What do you think? What do you think? Why do we pray to our Heavenly Father? James. Because sometimes we need help. Sometimes we need help, right. And so why do we pray to Him, though? So, right, you're exactly right. Sometimes we need help. So why do we pray to Him? How can He help us? James. Very good. He's the one who made the earth, made our lives. He has power to help us, right? We see that as He creates the earth. Yeah, so we pray to our Heavenly Father because He has power to help us. There's another thing we need to think about. Does our Father love us? Yeah, right. So we pray to our Heavenly Father, one, because He has power to help us, two, because He loves us. So we pray the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven. I want to focus on the petition that says, give us this day our daily bread. And this means more than bread. We pray that God gives us everything for what we need each day, and that includes our fathers, too. So uh, we pray to our Heavenly Father to give us everything we need, and that includes our earthly fathers as well. As we pray to our Father in heaven, He gives us lots of blessings, including our earthly fathers. So it's important for us today to think about our, heaven, our uh, earthly fathers are a blessing from our Heavenly Father. Fathers are a blessing from God. Let me ask you this. Do we always see our fathers as a blessing? Do we always listen to our fathers? Do we always give thanks for our fathers? It's okay if you say no. <laughs> because that's the truth, right? Oftentimes we don't always see our fathers as a blessing. We don't always see how God blesses us through them. And sometimes we don't listen to our fathers. Sometimes we don't obey our fathers. Sometimes we, yeah, just don't see him always as a blessing. But typically we're reminded of that our fathers are a blessing from God. God gives us, our Heavenly Father gives us our fathers and He works through them. How, how does God provide for us through our fathers? Can you think of any examples? What do our fathers do for us that are blessings to us? Can you think of anything? What do our fathers do for us even around the house? Um, do they make money so we can eat? Do they make money so we can have clothes to wear? Do they... Go ahead, James. Okay, good. Yeah, they're, they're a help with lots of different things, right? You ever, did you ever have something that's broken? You take it to your dad and say, can you fix this? And kind of magically, he fixes it, right? And so he helps us in a lot of ways. Free, go ahead. If you think of it, I'll come back to you. So again, our Heavenly Father gives us everything we need, including our earthly fathers, but we have to focus on one last thing our Heavenly Father gives us. We talked about sometimes we don't obey our fathers, don't give thanks to them. God, our Heavenly Father, also gives us His Son, Jesus, for the times when we don't give thanks for our fathers, for the times we don't obey our fathers. Our Heavenly Father gives us forgiveness in Jesus. And that's another thing that our Heavenly Father gives us. Do you think of it? Pray for us, yeah. One for us, yeah, right. So uh, a lot of things that our, our dads do for us, and they are a blessing in that way. So today we thank God, our Heavenly Father, for our fathers. And then lastly, I'd like us to think about how can we love our fathers, our earthly fathers. Again, they're a gift from God. Um, let's think about some of the ways that we might be able to love our fathers, uh, obey our fathers, help them out. And so in general, we might just listen to what they tell us to do. Uh, we can thank them for what they do for us. And I brought something with me here today that maybe, maybe <laughs> you guys might be interested in doing. So 
do your fathers ever wash your family vehicles? Sometimes they may take it through the automated uh, car wash, but sometimes they might do it at home. And if they do it at home, you maybe can help them wash your family vehicle, right? You can maybe help scrub the vehicle, clean it out, vacuum it. And then also I brought with me air fresheners, right? So after you clean the vehicle with your dad, you can maybe hang this up in your vehicle as you help your dad do things around the house, such as cleaning your family vehicle as well. Read the last thing. Do it manually, right? Right, right. And so maybe you can help your dad do that too. Very good. But again, all ways that we can love our dads and give thanks to our Heavenly Father for our fathers today. All right. Let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for providing for me all my needs, especially your son, Jesus. Thank you for fathers who care for me. Oh, man. All right, so before you go, I'll give you a air freshener. And you can use it as you help your dad clean your vehicle. And it'll smell like cotton candy is a scent. So, all right. <laughs> our service continues as we sing our sermon hymn, number 728, How Firm a Foundation. mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's message is our Old Testament reading of Job chapter 38 verses 1 through 11. We focus once again on the words of verse 1 that say to us today. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? This is God's word that blesses us this Sunday morning. Daddy, why is the sky blue? 
Mommy, why is the grass green? Why do caterpillars have so many legs? Why are the trees so tall? Why do I need to eat my vegetables? Why do I need to go to bed on time? Why do I need to go to the doctor and get a shot? And why did Grandpa have to die? As children go through life, they have a lot of questions. Sometimes the answer to their questions is hard for them to understand. And sometimes the answer to their questions is hard for them to accept. So sometimes parents just have to say, I know it's difficult to understand, but just trust me. As we look at our Old Testament reading for today, Job is a child of God who has a lot of questions too. Job has a lot of questions because everything in his life practically was taken away from him. Job was only left with his wife and his life. As we look at Job chapter 1, we see that Job's livestock, his servants, and his children are taken from him. And if all this were not bad enough, in Job chapter 2, Job loses his health as well. And so the turn of events in Job's life prompts many questions. Many questions to find the reason behind it all. Many questions to answer the question of why does this all happen. But through all the questions, a clear picture comes about as to who Job is. And through it all, a clear picture comes about as to who God is. As we think about the struggles that occurred in Job's life this morning, they really are formed in two ways. Number one, Job's struggles come about through all the tragedies that were allowed to come into his life. And number two, Job's struggles come about despite the fact that he had a strong relationship with his Lord. Job chapter 1 verse 1 says this about Job that he was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. Of course, this does not mean that Job was sinless, but it does mean that God was not punishing Job for some big sin he had done. And so as Job experienced the struggles in his life, his faith would be tested. The test being, where was his faith anchored? What did his faith trust in? And ultimately, who was the one who would call the shots in Job's life? Well, from the get-go here, Job does pretty well in the testing that he goes through. After his livestock, his servants, and his children are taken away, Job says in chapter 1, verse 21, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job 1, verse 22, goes on to say, In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. And Job does pretty well, too, after his health is taken away. Job says in chapter 2, verse 10, Shall we receive good from God, and shall we not receive evil? In that same verse, the ending words of that verse say, In all this Job did not sin with his lips. But yet the period of Job's suffering would continue. Today would turn into tomorrow. Tomorrow would turn into next week. Next week would turn into next month. Job's struggles would linger beyond the time in which he wanted them to linger. And God, through it all, would not do what Job wanted him to do. And so, through it all then, Job's patience wears thin, and in his weakness he would go on to charge God with injustice. In chapter 21, Job says, Why do the wicked live, reach old age, and grow mighty in power? Their houses are safe from fear, and no rod of God is upon them. 
And Job would also go on to say in chapter 24, verse 1, Why are not times of judgment kept by the Almighty? And why do those who know him never see his days? In summary, Job's weakness moved him to question God's ways, to elevate himself on the same plane as God, to charge God with injustice, and to make God accountable to him. But of course, God will have none of this. In today's text, the Lord says to Job, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you make it known to me. With these words, God puts Job in his place, we might say. God reminds Job that he is the creator of all things, that he has power and dominion over all, that he and his ways, his ability, his plans, his purposes are way above Job's. And this reminds Job of who he is. That he is a a mere creature, a mere part, a mere fraction of all of God's creation. And so Job then finds his place under God. But God putting Job in his place, we might say this morning, is not merely to punish him. Ultimately, God putting Job in his rightful place is something that God does to bless him. For Job finds the perfect place as he humbles himself under his God because it is there that he finds life. He finds the only place where life can be found under the living and loving God. Life is found under the living God who gives life to all who trust in Him and all who depend on Him. And so then, it is in such a place that Job will go on to say after today's reading, Behold, I am of small account. What shall I answer you? I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. As we gather today, we can compare our lives to Job's life this morning. This is to say that in Jesus Christ, we are ones who are blameless and upright and fear God and turn from evil. Jesus has taken all our sin upon himself. All our sin upon himself. And Jesus has paid the full price for our forgiveness. He's paid it all. This is to say then that in Jesus, our sins are atoned for. This is to say that in Jesus, God does not punish us for our sins. But yet, as God's righteous people, we do experience suffering in life. Suffering that occasionally comes about through no fault of our own. And so then the question is, what do we do with unjust suffering? I think the natural response is to take it to the Lord, right? We take it to the Lord in prayer, as the hymn says. We take it to the Lord in prayer. And so then we pray, Lord, please take this from me. And we pray, Lord, please take this from me. And we pray, Lord, please take this from me. And we pray, Lord, please take this from me. And we keep praying that because there are times in which the Lord does not remove our suffering as we want. There are times when the Lord doesn't act the way we want Him to. And so the question of what do we do with our unjust suffering resurfaces again. And the natural response for us as children, as God's children, is for us to have questions. And so then maybe we have questions that are born of humble faith. Questions such as, Lord, why is this happening to me? Help me understand. Lord, why is this happening to me? Help me through it. Lord, why is this happening to me? Help me trust your ways. 
But sometimes our questions are born of prideful demands. Prideful demands that elevate ourselves to put ourselves on the same level of God. And here then we ask questions, Lord, why is this happening to me? I don't deserve this. Lord, why is this happening to me? And why aren't you doing anything to help me? Lord, why is this happening to me? I have lived a good life, and now it's your turn to fulfill your end of the bargain. In sinful pride, we are tempted to elevate ourselves onto God's level and for him to answer us. But of course, God will have none of this. The same words that apply to Job in our text today apply to us. God says, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Directs for action like a man, I will question you, and you make it known to me. So here too, God reminds us that he is God. We are not. Here too, God reminds us that he is in control. We are not. Here he reminds us that his ways, his ability, his plan, His purposes are way above ours. They're better than ours. It reminds us that we are mere creatures. A mere part, a mere fraction of all of God's creation. So it is here under God we find our right place as we live under the living God in a perfect and right relationship with Him. And God putting us in our place, we might say this morning, is ultimately full of gospel. God putting us in our rightful place is full of blessings. For as we humble ourselves and put ourselves under the living God, we find life. A life filled with God's grace and mercy and protection and provisions and presence. A life filled with life under him because it's the only place where we can find life. For the living God gives us life as we live under him, as we trust in him, as we depend on him. And it is in such a place that we can along with Job say the words, Behold, I am of small account. What shall I answer you? I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. In summary, today's text shows us who our God is and it shows us who we are in him too. As a visual this morning, I think our picture on our bulletin cover serves us well as we think about who God is, as we think about who we are, If you would, pull out your bulletin at this time and take a look at the picture that we have here. As we look at our bulletin cover for today, it's easy to see Jesus in the boat, right? So here we have Jesus in the boat. Here we have God on the scene, the creator of all things, and he is calming the storm. We see God here in Jesus. But also we see here Jesus' disciples, right? And please take note of their posture. Their posture is one of hanging on to life at all costs, right? They have no power or control over things. They have no ability to chart their course. God in Jesus is here, calming the storm to give his disciples life. God in Jesus is here to provide for his people. But there's a bigger message we might say as we look at the picture of today's bulletin cover. It not only shows us God and Jesus who has control over all things, it not only shows us the disciples, God's people who have no control over things, but it also shows us that God and Jesus is here to give his people life. God and Jesus is here in the midst of the storm. God and Jesus is here in the midst of struggles. And Jesus would go on to provide salvation for us as his people through another wooden instrument, 
that be the instrument of the cross. This is who our God is as we see Jesus. This is who our God is who gives us life through Jesus. This is who our God is as we trust in him and find life under him. And so as we go through the sufferings of life then, we can trust our Lord. He goes with us through the storms. He walks with us through the struggles. We can trust him because we know God's heart in Jesus. And so as God's children, we may have a lot of questions as we go through life. Sometimes it's hard for us to understand the answer. Sometimes it's hard for us to accept the answer. And so sometimes the Lord just says to us, I know it's difficult to understand, but just trust me. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the peace of God that does pass all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our service for this morning continues as we sing the offertory. This begins on the bottom of page 192. Please stand. Created be a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. As our offering is brought forward this morning, we sing stanza one of hymn number 781. thine alone a trust O Lord from thee In our prayers for this morning, we include the people who are listed in our bulletin. And so let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wondrous works to the children of men. You hold power over wind and waves, sin and death. Deliver us from every trouble and distress and bring us at last to our eternal heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our salvation, you have ushered in the favorable time and day of salvation through the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Support all your ministers and remove all obstacles from hearing and believing the word they preach. Let your grace be proclaimed through every hardship, struggle, and suffering, and endurance, and encourage us by the example of many saints to consider ourselves rich and alive despite every opposition. For since we have Christ, we have all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, open wide the hearts of Christians to one another, especially within the home. Accept our thanks for all fathers on this Father's Day, and may your blessings be upon them so that they might continue to serve in their vocation. Among us, let love be genuine, speech be truthful, and patience constant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all knowledge, you alone, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, laid the earth's foundations and set the limits and order of our universe. Bless all noble sciences that plumb the depths of your creation. Give students, professors, and researchers joy in their discoveries and humility before your majesty, that at all times you may be acknowledged as the true God 
and creator of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you rule this world by your power. Give to our civil servants respect and recognition of your creation and its nature. When they use the authority given them from above, let it be in accord with your good design for our world and not for the corruption of sin, which they are to rebuke for the good of their citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you see that we are perishing, yet you bid us to set our fears aside and to trust in you for the sake of Christ, by whose blood we have received peace for our troubled consciences. Do not reject our prayers for their faithlessness, but teach us to trust you fully. Give your protection and peace to those in need, especially today we pray for Claire, Bev, and Danny. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Holy Lord, we join with the sons of God and shout for joy as Christ Jesus gives to us his true body and blood in the Lord's Supper. Let us not doubt, but firmly believe your words, that you who formed our world and its matter know well how to be present for us in our forgiveness in this sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Shine your light of mercy, peace, and power on your people. Especially today, we pray for Greg and Alicia Kreitzer, also Mark and Chris Kreitzer, and Carol Larson. Bless their lives with your love and presence and enable them to glorify your name and be a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and whatever else you know that we need, we ask of you, O Lord, to grant for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
abide with you, my God, forever. Our service this morning continues as we sing the Song of Simeon. Please stand. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people is Rael. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. We sing the closing hymn number 782. Gracious God, you send great blessings. God, you send great blessings new each morning, all our days. For your mercies never ending, for your love we offer praise. Lord, we pray that we, your people, who your gifts unnumbered claim, through the sharing of your blessings may bring glory to your name. By your word you formed creation filled with creatures large and small. As we tend that endless treasure may our care encircle all. Lord, we pray that we, your people, who your gifts unnumber claim, through the sharing of your blessings, may bring glory to your name. In his earthly life, our Savior knew the care of faithful friends, May our deeds of dedication offer love that never ends. 
Lord, we pray that we, your people, who your gifts unnumbered claim, through the sharing of your blessings, may bring glory to your name. Heavenly Father, may our caring bear the imprint of your grace, with the Son and Holy Spirit, praise be yours in every place. Lord, we pray that we, your people, who your gifts unnumbered claim, through the sharing of your blessings, may bring glory to your name. Please be seated.